Well, here we bring you Mr. and Mrs. Jules and Juno, our favorite brother and sister team. So we wanted to show you a video of them because we just adore this pair. They're out of Downey Shelter. I'll never forget that day. No one told me they belonged together or came in together. And she hadn't eaten in, I don't know, seven days or more. And she'd had a litter of puppies and she was just skin and bones and uh, refusing food, everything. So I saw her first in the female section and um, she didn't even like me. Um, she was pathetic. She was cowering in the corner, her rib cage showed. She'd given up on life, she was super depressed. And I asked for an employee to take her out, but um, she kind of scared a person when the employees approached her, she cowered, she shook like, don't go in there. And sometimes if I try to go with them, it helps. And it didn't even help. She wouldn't even kind of look at me like she was friendly. So uh, you can see now there's no problem with friendliness. So we got her out and reluctantly, and she just, she made my, my heart hurt. It was so pathetic. And I figured out because their impound numbers were close and I had passed him up in the mail section, that boy, they look alike. So we had her, an employee had her, and we were walking through the mail section. I said, go buy that mail with her, because they'll tell you. Oh my gosh, when she saw him, I was following behind, her tail came up, her demeanor softened, and of course you, can, you could tell she knew this dog. And he, he reciprocated. So it was very obvious, this is a brother and sister. And on top of that, I believe they had a litter of puppies together, because she had just had a litter taken from her. So there they were in Downey Shelter with no one for them and they could have died. And once she had him beside her, even though she was in terrible condition, just her whole demeanor changed where you could see the relief in her face that she'd seen him again. So they went to the back to have uh, their microchips done, loaded them up in the car side by side. And even though they looked anxious and worried about where they were going now and what's going on in their life, there was just a calmness over them that they were beside each other. And once they got here, it just went uphill from there. You see, there's, there's no problem. They've recovered, they've gained weight, they're inseparable. So of course they have to be placed together and you wouldn't even imagine of separating these two. They're just a wonderful pair together. And if anyone knows the breed, we've all learned how much easier it is to have a pair because they have each other to play with when you're not home and you're busy. Ow, oh, we got his tail in our face. Juno, there he is, there's his better side. So you see how adorable they are and they play off each other so cute. She's the boss and she tells you everything. She talks, talks, talks about this and that and what she thinks is on time and not on time and chats and in and out and he just follows along, which is the typical female male relationship uh, with Huskies anyway. Usually the females are always in charge and the males are more easygoing and let them uh, have their way and just go along for the ride. Just, lo just love this pair. So, um, of course, no thoughts of splitting them up. That's out of the question. They must stay together. And they, they're going to bring a family just an unbelievable lifetime of joy and humor in watching, in watching the interaction and the way they play off each other. Oh, they're about two-ish now, maybe two and a half, and um, just a great pair. And that's Jules and Juno. <laughs> And see, now she's telling there you okay? with the mouth around his mouth. You gonna play down here in front of us? So we're trying to. We're trying to get loose from these leashes and go have some fun here. We'll watch him play a little bit here. What are you two doing? What are you doing? You gonna talk to us? You gonna tell us? What's up?